Well, the central bank is expected to offer about 229.62 billion euro worth of bills to investors today at the Treasury bills market. Let's cross over now to FMDQ Marketplace. Chioma Udu, fixed income dealer with GT Bank, will tell us more. Good morning, Chioma. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. Good morning. So we saw bullish tilt yesterday at both the Treasury bills market and bond segment. Are investors getting over the sudden increase of the, on the Sierra? Well, uh, we've seen um, a slight um, tightening in the market. Opening today, the money market opened at um, about two, over 200 billion, which is a, a far cry from the, the average of 100 billion we usually have in the system. So we've seen the money market rates trend up to about nine to 12 percent, and we expect that we're going to see the reflex, the, the reflection of this tightening, as the results of the NTB offer today. So with the treasury bills auction, auctions today, uh, what are the major expectations for investors? For us, we think that um, the rates will maintain or we'll see a slight increase as banks and investors, you know, try to um, invest um, in assets that are giving, will give them um, higher yielding um, returns. Currently, the rate is at, is at low of, at, of 2% and at the high of about 5 for the NTB. So we've seen um, investors begin to shy away from that class of assets and looking for other, other investable classes of assets. How, however, we expect that there's going to be an OMO auction tomorrow. Uh, we have a, 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 about 400 billion maturing. We expect that we're going to see interest in, from foreign investors and also from banks. Well, it's midweek, and uh, what is the outlook for the rest of the week? Um, for us, um, for today, we, we expect a quiet trading session, especially in the T-bill space, as we all wait for the, the results of the auction. But at the long end of the call, speaking about the bond, we expect that the bullish sentiment will still um, prevail. Rates are currently at 7% at the short tenant bond, um, bond, and then at 12% at the long term. But we've also seen... Um, We've also seen interest in bonds that were offered at the last auction. So we're going to see more of the activities on the long end of the yield curve, which is the bonds. All right. Thank you for your time, Choma. Choma Udu is a fixed income dealer with GT Bank. Uh, let's do a quick um, recap of yesterday's um, trading activities. Uh, the equities market sentiments further waned as the NSA All Share Index dipped by 0.59% to 29000 378 points following um, continued sell-offs of banking stocks. Subsequently, the year-to-date return moderated to 9.45%. The total volume of trades declined by 43.49% to 250.93 million units, valued at 4.83 billion naira and exchanged in 4,000 561 deals. Stambik IBTC was the most traded stock by volume and value at 43.04 million units and 1.79 billion naira each. All sector indices declined except the insurance sector, which gained about 1.54%. The banking went down 2.18%. Oil and gas was down 1.35%. Industrial goods, 0.57% percent and the consumer goods down 0.28 percent. Our market sentiment is measured by market breadth was negative as 23 tickers recorded declines while nine tickers recorded gains. Uh, Julius Berger went up 9.93 percent and NACO of course um, uh, went up 9.67 percent to top the gainers list while we have ABC Transport dropping 9.76 percent and Smith. Uh, recorded 9.17% drop, and these uh, companies formed the largest declines for the day. Uh, the Treasury bills uh, yesterday, of course, the, uh, the overnight lending rate contracted by 125 basis points to 9.25%, a system liquidity estimated at 258.87 billion naira remained buoyant. Activities in the Treasury bills market was with bullish bias, as average yield paired marginally by four basis points to 3.56%. Yields contracted at the short and long end of the curve, following interest in the 16 day to maturity and 247 day to maturity bills. The mid segment closed flat. Elsewhere, average yields expanded by 34 basis points to close at 13.44% at the automobile secondary market. 
and um, also at the Nigerian uh, Treasury Bill's primary auction today, the CBN is expected to offer about 229.62 billion naira worth of deals to investors. Now, at the bond segment of the market, uh, that segment continues to witness great performance across the curve as average yield contracted by 46 basis points to 9.69%. All right, um, let's wrap up the show with um, this uh, report. Our capacity constraints have bedeviled many small-scale rice farmers and millers across Nigeria for years. And despite government measures uh, designed to spur rice production over the years, demand still outstrips domestic supply. Let's watch. Thomas Maji is planting rice on more of his land than ever on his farm in Nigeria's Benue State to take advantage of resurging prices since the country shut its land borders in August. But he says he cannot go much further. With no machinery or irrigation, limited manual labor and no spare cash for fertilizers, the 45-year-old is not expecting any dramatic change in fortunes. His work is nearby, be it hand harvested stalks on the ground to separate the grains from the chaff. We don't have tractor. We don't have, we have not been assessing fertilizer. We have not been assessing chemicals and all that. Even the harvester. We have not been assessing any. So our production is very low. But if those things are provided, we'll have a bumper harvest. The constraints Maji faces have bedeviled many rice farmers and millers across Nigeria for years. Despite government measures designed to spur rice production, farmers like Maji are getting less from their land than their counterparts elsewhere, and the nation is only minimally less reliant on imports. That's a problem for a government that wants to grow all of its own food and boost the country's agriculture, a sector that accounts for nearly a third of Nigeria's gross domestic product. At Wurukum Rice Mill in Makadi, Ivari Asan walks alongside her sister using a loud diesel power generator to drive machinery processing paddy grains into consumable rice. As we are here, People are buying it and taking it to Potako, Lagos, and uh, other, other states. They are not just using it here. So, and the demand, we can't meet the demand. Because we are doing it, some of the process manually. So we can't meet the demand. When President Buhari came into power in 2015, he pledged to help the nation's farmers bring self-sufficiency in rice, a grain that has gone from a luxury to a staple for tens of millions of Nigerians. Nigeria's central bank in 2015 banned the use of foreign exchange to pay for rice imports and has backed loans of at least 40 billion naira to help smallholders boost output. It also banned rice imports via the land borders and kept hefty 70% tariffs on rice imports coming through the country's ports. But Nigeria's shelves remained a chock full of foreign rice. In August 2019, Nigeria went a step further and closed its land borders altogether to stamp out smuggling with rice as main targets. We have large demand arising from um, the effect of flood and then the border closure, uh, but more or less uh, less um, supply. So prices are, are a bit higher than uh, the start of prices that like were in 2017, 2018. So we expect more money in the pocket for, for this year. A 50 kilogram bag of rice can cost as much as 24,000 naira and that's nearly double the price in July before the borders were shut and equivalent to Nigeria's minimum wage. We'll reach a, a, a point where people who are buying rice can't afford to buy rice. They were looking at other alternatives uh, to get energy or get uh, food on their table. So that's not in the long term in the interest of we the rice uh, farmers. In a review of the Nigerian rice industry, consultants KPMG say Nigeria spends roughly $5 million a day on imports, which come mainly from Thailand, India and the United States. And that's a wrap on the show. Thank you for watching. I'm Chimeze Obi Iwago.